I can't hide. Um, sorry, I mean, good morning. It's Friday and it's the uh, 5th of June. Tomorrow is the anniversary, 76th anniversary? No, maybe longer, of D-Day, because it's 6th of June. Blew. Uh, blew. And I am clearly unprepared. So it's time for answers. I'm sure that's what you're after. And I need to go through, um, well, the answers and the answers to the quiz that you did on Wednesday. Alas, as you can probably tell, I am totally out of it and I'm struggling a bit to get myself awake. Um, part of the problem is I've left all the answers that you've submitted and, and thank you, but I've left them all at work. And so I have literally no idea what the scores are. I will hopefully know by the morning and I'll be able to put them in the show my homework that this video is attached to. So you will know the score, even though I, at the moment, don't. You'll know before you came here. So without further ado, and again, bad YouTubing, we're going to do the answers. Here they are. Let's start at the top. I, I feel like I should have music playing, but Oh, hang on. There we go. Question one. The United States has the highest number of COVID-19 cases in the world. Who now has the second highest number of cases? It can't be us. We're not recording them all. It is Brazil. Um, a surge of infections in Brazil uh, reporting the second highest number of cases in the world. Well, there you go. Dominic Cummings and Goings and Cummings and Goings, but he's still there and not yet sacked, has been heavily criticised, that's putting it lightly, for making a 264 mile car trip during lockdown. And I would drive to 60 miles and I would drive to 60 more. Sorry, it's a proclaimer's reference. What role does he have in politics? apart from a ghoul. He is the advisor to Boris Johnson, sometimes known as Boris Johnson's brain. I should say Alexander de Feffel, Boris Johnson. Uh, Boris is a name he gave himself. Um, when people say, oh, Boris, they mean Mr. Johnson. He's a prime minister. Uh, they're calling for Mr. Cummings to resign or be fired, um, and that's been uh, somewhat eclipsed by the easing of lockdown rules. Hmm. It's almost like the two things are connected. I'm getting really weirdly political. I apologise. I'm going to stop now. Which country quit it? No, I'm not. Quit its membership of the World Health Organization last week. Yeah. Yeah. Tis the orange one. President Trump said he's severing US ties with the World Health Organization because he believes they've mishandled the coronavirus pandemic and believed China too much. Or something. What type of animal is shown in the image from the news? It is apparently a periodical, one of those, cicada. After spending 17 years underground, millions of cicadas will be emerging in parts of the United States. They're expected to come out in early summer across southwest Virginia, parts of North Carolina, and in West Virginia. Um, there's a song there, isn't there? Huh. Uh, the last time the cicadas emerged in many of those regions was in 2003 and 2004, though some areas saw an emergence in 2013. That's interesting. Can you imagine being underground since 2004? Wait, no. No, you can't. You can't imagine being underground that long. You're not that old. Oh, goodness me. I'm old. Question five. Which US city is at the centre of violent protests after a man died while being arrested by police because they knelt on his neck for nine minutes? This is, of course, Minneapolis. Massive protests have swept the US cities uh, following the police killing of a handcuffed black man in Minneapolis, and they've swept our country as well. Um, because, funnily enough, racism is a thing pretty much everywhere. I can't believe I have to say this, but I feel I ought. Black Lives Matter. Just, you know, going to throw that out there. Um, any of you going, oh, but all lives matter. Yeah, but, you know, it's like saying all houses matter, but the one that's on fire probably needs more attention right now. Um, so, uh, I've got to stop being so political. There must be something fun. Um, ah, here we go. On what date is Premier League football set to start again? I say fun. I haven't watched football in years. Um, I have no idea. I'm hoping you guys did. Um, Tis the 17th of June with Aston Villa versus Sheffield United. Wait, Sheffield United? Isn't it Sheffield Wednesday? I honestly don't know. You will tell me whether I got that right. And Man City versus Arsenal. Um, subject to government approval. A full round of fixtures would then be played on the weekend of the 19th to the 21st of June. Well, isn't that a pick? Scientists have observed a new planet being formed for the first time using a special telescope called, I'm, my guess, and it is a guess, is C. If I'm right with C, I am going to be so pleased. It is 
C, hooray! Of course it is, it's scientists naming it. They're not gonna name it something fun. They're gonna name it what it is. It's a very large telescope. Um, it's the European Southern Observatory's very large telescope. Um, images show a spiral of dust and gas around a young star called AB Orgay, Orgay even, which is located 520 light years away from Earth. Light years, of course, a measurement of distance. It's the amount of distance light travels in a year. Light travels at three times 10 to the power eight meters per second. Uh, three times 10 to the power eight means there's 10, uh, sorry, eight zeros after the three. So it's 300 million meters every second. It's impressive. Uh, Canis Majoris four, by the way, um, is so large that it would take light around about eight months to travel the distance of its circumference. It's the, or was, the largest star known to science. I think there's a larger one there. A pair of these shoes were sold at auction for almost $1 million. Who made them famous? Now, I do remember your answer for this. You said it was Michael Jordan, and you were right. The Air Jordan 1s, which Jordan wore in his rookie season with the Chicago Bulls in 1985, fetched um, 943,000 New Zealand dollars at auction through Sotheby's in New York. Um, a Netflix documentary about the legendary player has drawn a lot of attention recently because of that weird viral clip, which even I know about, where he bets with someone about throwing coins at a balloon or something ridiculous, or a squirrel. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Question nine. Donald Trump has said that the US is spending billions of dollars, billions, sorry, um, on developing super duper missiles. Curse words words. Um, what are the weapons better known as? I'm guessing hypersonic. The other two don't make sense. If it's hyperthermal, I, I will find a hat. And I don't have to eat it. Hurrah! It's hypersonic. They fly at speeds of a mile or a second or faster, which is ridiculous. And maneuver in ways that make them extra hard to detect. I mean, extra hard to detect. Um, and destroy and fly. Also, that's the wrong spelling of maneuver. That's an American... Ugh. Ugh, there's an O in maneuvers. Um, Russia and China have been working on these types of weapons for a while now. For a while. I mean, I know it's lockdown. They're finding it hard with these questions, but yeah. Yeah. What products has the pharmaceutical company Johnson & Johnson announced it will stop selling in the United States and Canada due to health concerns? It is talc-based baby powder. Well, there you go. Lawsuits against Johnson & Johnson alleged some of their talc products were contaminated with asbestos. Oh, my giddy end. Um, they deny the allegations. Both talc and asbestos are naturally occurring minerals that may be found in close proximity in the earth. Therefore, it is important to select talc mining sites carefully and take steps to set, test the ore sufficiently. Well, every day's a school day. Question 11. Harry Potter author J.K. Rowling has just published a new story, also promised to pay the uh, yearly salary of that fella that's, yeah, um, that was on Twitter, it was a Twitter thing. You guys aren't on Twitter, are you? on Instagram and other things that I don't understand. The title of the story is not the Jabberwocky, I can tell you that now, and it's not the Gruffalo, so it must be the Ichabog. Uh, she wrote it as a fairy tale for her children over a decade ago. It's unrelated to Rowling's other books. I'll be free to read online. Well, there you go. Let me know if it's any good. Which company teamed up with NASA to launch these men into space? Um, I watched the launch. It was actually quite exciting. I wasn't expecting to find it exciting, but I did. Um, it is, of course, SpaceX. Uh, they launched from the United States for the first time in nearly a decade that the United States launched men into space. Um, they escaped just in time. Crew, Crew Dragon is the first ever private human vehicle to head for orbit. The result of years of hard work and an incredible amount of investment because private companies now apparently on our escape routes too. Question 13, multinational co company Hertz, which meant I couldn't tell you the joke, has filed for bankruptcy in the US. In what industry is Hertz one of the largest operators? Hey, I've just been hit by a rental car. Hertz, not anymore, but thanks for asking. Ha ha, it's a rental car, it's a rental car. Uh, they operated a century ago in Chicago with a dozen Model T Fords. You can get it any clear like, as long as it's black. He never said it. Um, had already furloughed or laid off 20,000 employees or around half its global workforce in response to the pandemic. Well, I guess no one's, yeah, I suppose car rental with a pandemic isn't a terribly good business plan. How did they survive in 1918? Um, true or false, the International Olympic Committee has said that the Tokyo Games would have to be scrapped if the event cannot be held next year. It is true. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has already said the multi-sports event cannot take place in 2021 unless the virus is contained. Uh, the IOC president said they are committed to the games going ahead, but decisions will be made when the world's COVID-19 situation becomes clearer. 
sad times. Question 15. In a promising step for the future, mm, the world's largest fully electric plane conducted a successful test flight last week. Apart from the pilot, how many passengers can it take? It is nine. The all-electric e-caravan is a retrofitted Cessna, which managed a successful 30-minute flight last week. Now, to be fair, electric planes have been around far longer than this, and electric planes already have a much larger range and a much longer range. This makes it sound like it's in its infancy. It's not. The thing is, there's a lack of investment to build larger versions of planes that already work and are already flying much longer distances with things like solar panels on the wings, for example, which extend their range and even more efficient batteries. So this makes it sound like it's ridiculous. It's not. Um, this is tiny. We all know this is tiny. Um, electric planes are seen as a necessary step for the future because fuel but power planes tend to dump a lot of their fuel, but that's how the thrust works, into the high atmosphere. And as the fuel is essentially carbon, um, that's kind of a problem because it traps the heat and accelerates global warming. Question 16, which country has this flag? But not necessarily for much longer. It is, of course, New Zealand. I can't, I can't do a New Zealand accent. I tried, but I failed. Um, the person from New Zealand, what was his name? I can't remember his name. He discovered the UK, of course. Um, in 1823, I believe. Um, and they're doing a competition to try and get rid of the Union flag. Donald Trump has admitted he takes hydro, hydro, hydroxychloroquine, uh, which has not yet gone through proper clinical tests because they kill people, so they've all been cancelled. Uh, what has it been used for in the past, apart from treating lupus? Um, it is preventing and treating malaria. Uh, Donald Trump has been calling hydro, hydroxychloroquine a game changer, except that it doesn't work. Uh, however, a US woman who has been taking the drug for 19 years has spoken up against Trump's claims after she contracted COVID-19. Also, it's there to help people with lupus and now they can't get it and they're dying because everyone now wants to take it as a preventative because the president of the United States is a strange, fraying, orange thing. 18. How many people were tested for COVID-19 in Wuhan over 10 days? It was 9 million people. 9 million people. We have not yet managed our first million tests, just so. Health authorities have used so-called pool testing to test 9 million out of the city's 11 million residents in 10 days. Pool testing is quick, but can sometimes lead to inaccuracies, like false positives. So it, in theory, will lead to more people thinking they have the disease than not. I think it's a 30% rate of that. So which athlete has topped the Forbes list for, of top female sports earnings for the past year? Now, to be fair, all of these are heavyweight and highly skilled athletes. I don't know. It's Naomi Osaka, the one I didn't know. Uh, the 22-year-old tennis player earned 37.4 million US dollars over the past... Wait, what? That... I'm very confused. Uh, over the past 12 months from endorsements and prize money, eclipsing Serena Williams for the year. It's a new record for a female athlete, topping the previous mark of 29.7. Uh, million US dollars set by Marina Sh Maria Sharapova in 2015. Soccer is the 29th highest paid sports person overall. Wow. Interesting. So there are 29 higher, sorry, 28 higher paid athletes and they're all male. Who is this celebrity and businesswoman? Apparently it's Kylie Jenner. It is! Uh, Forbes magazine, I remembered that you wrote that one down because I wrote it down and thought, Ooh. That's interesting. Um, has revalued Kay Kylie Jenner's worth and alleges that the makeup mogul had inflated her net worth and is no longer considered a billionaire. There you go. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end. And at this point, I am going to stop being political. So I understand the letter has gone live on the school website. So I know now, and you know now, that we're going to meet face to face. <laughs> Um, school has been made safe. I can absolutely guarantee that. I've been in school. You've seen the videos. You know I've been there. Um, I'll be in next week again. I am very, very pleased to say that I do believe all the preparations that have been made in school are absolutely fantastic. I've been keeping track of what other schools have been doing. You know me. I'm a political animal. I read these things. Uh, and I have to say, I've been singularly impressed with what we've put in place. It's it works. It absolutely works for safety. It won't be the greatest in terms of school. It will not be normal. I appreciate that. But I'm so looking forward to seeing you again and uh, just hearing what you have to say. And I'm sure you're looking forward to seeing one another. It will be weird. Uh, you won't be able to mix like we do in a form room. We will not be in our form room. And I, I'm sorry about that. 
the sound quality will be awful in terms of reverb and in terms of the large spaces we're going to have to use. But I am so looking forward to seeing you. There will be a chance to do rat interviews, um, obviously socially distanced and all of that. Um, but it'll be great. It'll be fantastic. You'll get to see each other again. Um, we'll get to chat, kind of. Um, you'll get to chat amongst yourselves. That absolutely will be a thing. And uh, yeah, those first sessions are going to be fantastic. Um, and we'll see if there's anything more we can do to support you. What a way to end the week. Um, I thought that was pretty positive. So on that happy note that we're going to be seeing each other again. Well, maybe not happy for you guys to see me, but happy to see one another, I'm sure. Um, that happy note for you to see your friends once more, or at least people in the form. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. it. It's, yeah, it's been too long, but only when it's safe. And I'm glad we've waited as long as we have um, on that note. Have a lovely weekend. Um, and yeah, start planning. Um, stay safe look after yourselves, seek out the right, right advice, and uh, I shall see you, or rather you'll see me, on a Monday video. Thank you very much. Awkward pause.